then, on September the 2nd last year, the news that every military family dreads. 14 British military personnel have been killed in a plane crash in Afghanistan. It's the biggest loss of life in a single day since British forces began fighting in Afghanistan and Iraq five years ago. The victims were all on board an IF Nimrod, which came down in southern I just saw two blue uniforms through the door and I screamed. And during all this time, I would have been texting Steve and phoning him, just asking him to let me know that he was OK. We were just told that Gary was um, missing and presumed killed, at which point I, I didn't believe them. Um, a car drove past with uh, two guys in it. Um, coming to tell me that um, they were uh, in an accident and, and missing, presumed dead. Fourteen ordinary men or fourteen heroes? It matters not. What matters is that the respect, love, friendship and camaraderie in which they were all held is reflected in our attendance here today. A band of brothers who paid the ultimate sacrifice. But was it a sacrifice that could have been avoided? The Ministry of Defence says the plane wasn't shot down and there's no hint that pilot error was to blame. So was it a technical fault? The RAF set up a board of inquiry into the crash straight afterwards and the top brass have urged families to wait and see what it concludes. Nine months on, the families and crews are still waiting for answers. What is known is that shortly after refuelling in mid-air, there was a fire on board. Is that what caused the plane to crash? And what about the other planes that are still flying? Are they safe? We've discovered that the entire fleet has been plagued by fuel leaks in recent years. Up, in, up, up. Hold it there. The fuel problems have occurred after in-flight refueling, which, which occurs at, at high pressure. The tanker forces fuel through at very high pressure. Jimmy Jones knows Nimrod's inside out. As an RAF engineer, he used to investigate serious faults with the planes. He thinks air-to-air refuelling is causing many of the leaks. In-flight refuelling, as you may not be aware, was never part of the original of the, of the original fit. It was never, can I say, designed into the, the system from, from the original Nimrod concept. In fact, it was a quick fix made during the Falklands War. Britain wanted its spy planes down in the South Atlantic quickly, but it was too far for the Nimrods to fly. Refueling in mid-air was celebrated as the answer. Did you have a comfortable flight? We had a very comfortable flight. Uh, it's quite a new experience. We were uh, refueled twice on the flight. As far as I'm concerned, and the people who did the modification, who I know I've, I've spoken to them, it was never seen as, a, as an ongoing day-to-day -day, um, means of operation. But that's exactly what it has become. In the Middle East, crews are flying non-stop 14-hour missions and in-flight refuelling is being used more than ever. Could this added strain on such old planes explain the increase in fuel leaks? Yes, according to one crewman just back from the Gulf. When you put two huge aircraft 40 feet apart, there's a huge amount of turbulence and stress on the airframe. And don't forget, it's a 40-year-old aircraft going from plus 50 degrees centigrade to minus 40 degrees centigrade, with seals that don't know if they're supposed to expand or contract. Those seals are on fuel pipes, so leakages are an ongoing problem. The Armed Forces Minister has admitted there have in fact been 25 fuel leaks on Nimrods in the five months up to March alone. He says safety was never compromised, but that's not what we've been told. We know of one leak just eight weeks after Kandahar that was very serious indeed. There was another incident on the 8th of November, again in the Gulf, same theatre, 
uh, operation as uh, the one on the 2nd of September. That was a, a broken uh, fuel pipe within the bomb bay. We've discovered that an air incident report was filed by the crew, something that's only done for unusual events that require detailed investigation. The cause was found to be a leaking fuel pipe coupling, which happened again after air-to-air -air refueling. How serious is something like that in your view? Well, that could have been as serious as the one we lost in September. It could have brought the plane it down. It could have, absolutely. It could have been, I said, a replication of that. The head of the RAF admits there have been problems with air-to-air -air refueling, but insists it's nothing to worry about. There are a lot of people concerned that air-to-air -air refueling might have had something to do with what happened at Kandahar. Are you satisfied that it's actually safe? I am. It's exactly the same as the rest of the, um, the integrity of the aircraft. It has been a focus for understandable reasons. Um, and we did suspend air-to-air -air refueling for a period in November. Now, we looked at what we were doing, both in terms of the integrity of the system, the way we were actually conducting the air-to-air -air refueling, and I'm satisfied that um, the way we're now doing it um, is as safe as it needs to be. But how safe is that? Soon after refueling procedures were revised, another serious problem happened, again following air-to-air -air refueling. Last December, on landing in the Gulf, a Nimrod crew discovered pools of fuel in the aircraft's bomb bay. Again, an air incident report was filed. This time, the investigation recommended that pipework seals should be examined and replaced as necessary. Earlier this year, more trouble when the Ministry of Defence temporarily grounded the whole Nimrod fleet for safety reasons. Leaks, or at least dents, have been found in the fuel lines of two planes at RAF Kinloss. These have been taken out of service, but uh, I understand this evening that uh, some other Nimrod aircraft within that fleet at Kinloss have been cleared to fly. 25 fuel leaks in five months, is that a lot? It's a lot. I would always like to see the figure reduced um, to the absolute lowest minimum. It sounds like a lot. If you look over the last 10 years, the level of fuel leaks that we've had has remained pretty constant over those 10 years. But let's look but at the, the, the five months up to March, there were 25 fuel leaks, some of them really quite serious. Are, are you concerned about that? I am very concerned about it, and that's why we have made sure that we analysed every single incident. There are no underlying themes. But does that reassure the men and women who have to deal with these fuel leaks? They're working the planes harder than ever as fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan has intensified. During a recent visit to the Middle East, one MP claims he found air crews stretched to the limit. What sort of concerns did they present to you when you spoke to them face to face? They are the most incredibly professional people. They, at any price, will go up and fly and come back day after day. But there is a crisis of morale because they just feel that they can't take much more, and that's just human. There is a worry about the aircraft, there's no doubt about that. And there is a worry that sometime in the future something is going to go wrong again. With no end in sight to the war, low morale is hardly surprising, especially after losing so many friends at Kandahar. But it's more than that, according to one former Air Vice Marshal, who's still in touch with serving RAF personnel. What are you hearing informally about the state of the Nimrod fleet? I'm told that it's diabolical. And I think that sums it up adequately. It's worse than it's ever, ever been. And it's not going to get any better. 